2012 at 6.30 p.m. Welcome. I hope everybody had a wonderful spring break and back to, um, I guess now it's kind of spring versus last month was summer, so I don't know, it seems kind of mixed up. Um, first on the agenda is approval of the March 13th, 2012 board minutes. Can I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Motion passes. Um, and approval of the March 20th, 2012 special meeting of the Parks and Recreation Board minutes. I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Those pass as well. Um, our first um, presentation tonight will be about our dredging policy for the Lakefront Boat Basin and will be presented by Superintendent Jeff White. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam President. Uh, board members, members of the audience. Um, tonight I'm, I'm presenting on a uh, formalized policy regarding the frequency and criteria for lakefront boat basin uh, dredging. Um, just to give you some background, back in December of last year we received uh, correspondence from the Lake Forest Yacht Club officers requesting that the city institute a schedule of two dredgings on a fixed basis um, each year. At the time that we received the correspondence, we were just uh, beginning the uh, budget uh, process and the representatives were told that this would be a perfect opportunity for staff to look into um, the, um, the expense and the criteria for, for doing that. So um, we um, have done that and we have uh, come with this policy. Um, some further background, we, the city began in-house dredging back in um, 2001 when it purchased its own hydraulic uh, dredger. Um, part of that justification for that expense was a, a two dredge uh, event each year as well as being able to provide um, our own schedule for when we do the, uh, the dredging rather than being um, subject to a schedule of a, um, outsourcing it to another vendor. Um, back in um, 2008, due to complaints from larger boat owners about the inconsistency of a dredging practice and in light of the 2008 cost of services study and shrinking budgets, uh, city staff reviewed the practices at that time and determined that the city would commit to dredging a second time only if the August water levels confirmed uh, a need and the, the expense was justified based on the volume of boaters and our ability to provide our own uh, programming. At the time, there was only a small number of boaters within the compound that were affected by low water levels and uh, the, the more uh, sand in, in the basin. I think there was four at the time. Uh, currently, we have approximately 20 boats that are affected by um, the lack of or um, the second dredge. Um, there is also um, Lake Michigan is in a, a very low period for water levels. Um, that's mostly due to um, mild winters, not a lot of snowfall that doesn't melt and feeds into Lake Michigan. So not only do we um, see a lot of shifting sand throughout the winter, but now we have low levels, which actually provides even less clearance for, um, for boaters. Um, in the fall, we did have to cancel one of our own programs uh, for, um, because we couldn't get access to open water. Uh, we also had to curtail some of the practice time that the Lake Forest um, sailing team, high school team, uh, was able to get out into open water. Um, and um, they need access to that because they're very competitive in the uh, Midwest Interscholastic Sailing Association where we really do compete um, on a high level and having that practice time is um, vital to them. Um, annual dredging expenses varies uh, depending on the, the sand removal required. That just depends on how much uh, um, sand comes into the basin uh, from October to uh, end of March, beginning of um, April. Um, we do, um, uh, excuse me, we do budget for two staff people working eight hour days for 15 days to um, man the, the dredger. Uh, that also, we also budget for the fuel to run on those um, 15 days. 
Uh, we do require a tow truck to bring the dredger from municipal services down to the lakefront and also a specialized crane that will lift the, the dredger into the basin. Now, um, of those, really the, the only expense that's truly incurred by the lakefront operations is the crane, the tow truck, and the fuel. The manpower is um, something that uh, is, really comes out of the parks budget. Um, if they weren't working on the dredging, they would be working on other um, projects within the, the city, so that we're going to incur that cost uh, regardless. Um, we have in, um, incorporated the $7,000 for the three items that uh, are direct expense to the dredging into the FY13 budget and didn't see any significant um, change to the bottom line, especially in light that we did raise um, fees um, in for the compound storage boat furnace, so that really did offset the cost for a second dredge. Um, we did look into um, outsourcing it, just as seeing if that's a possibility, and uh, we did have a quote on record from uh, Edward Gillen out of Milwaukee for $18,000, and that was really only to do the mouth and the little part of the channel area that didn't incorporate you know, the entire um, basin. I also checked with uh, the Winneka Park District and checked to see how much they spend on outsourcing their dredging. They spend about um, fifteen dollars to $25,000 each year uh, on theirs, and their um, area is about a third of our, our basin site. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there's a lot of benefits involved in um, um, having us, uh, you know, the dredging. It does enhance the safety for all, all boaters by reducing their risks um, to grounding. We actually did have a, a boat, I believe it was a year or so ago, that grounded on um, some, a sandbar, wasn't able to get it out, a storm came in and just basically destroyed the boat. It does provide a useful uh, harbor that supports a year-round city-operated community sailing school. Uh, it fulfills our commitment to our patrons paying fees for storage and launching. Uh, it does provide a service um, that results in a revenue stream for the department and helps support our lakefront services and capital expenses. Uh, and it's just one of those uh, things that maximizes the enjoyment and the intrinsical value of, of the lakefront. Um, sorry. This is the dredger. I thought it'd be nice to incorporate a picture of the, of the dredger. Um, this was just taken, uh, I believe, last week. Um, it takes two people, as you can tell, to, um, to do that. It's like a big vacuum cleaner, but sorry. <laughs> um, so why, why a policy? We, well, we, we want to establish a policy because right now it's just been common practice that we, this is what we're going to uh, be able to do. So it really shows our patrons that we're committed to providing um, a dredging uh, for them. Um, it also um, lets staff know what is expected of them. Um, now there is some um, policy commitments and triggers that are within this policy and, and um, I'll just highlight them now. Uh, we will, the department will commit funds um, in the lakefront budget to complete two, two dredges um, each year. Uh, we will commit the manpower uh, to complete those uh, dredges each year. Uh, we will make arrangements with the uh, tow, uh, the tow company and the crane company to, to make sure that we can get the delivery of those items um, quickly. We just tell them when we're expecting it and if we do need a, a second dredge that we'd, we'd call them so they can come out um, right away. Uh, staff will track the water depth um, in the basin throughout the summer and if by August 15th the level is less than uh, five and a half feet we will conduct um, the second dredge. Um, if the water is greater than uh, five and a half feet uh, we feel that it's the, a second dredge um, isn't warranted. Jeff, if I could just interrupt there. Yes. Uh, the, the five, of, I know it's for the, the fall dredge is primarily at the mouth and the entrance. Yes. So is that the only place that the five and a half feet will be checked? In the, no, in the it, would be, uh, it would be checked throughout. Um, the, the main areas that, uh, we had a conversation with the, the Yacht Club and they said that uh, that the, the fall dredge, for a fall dredge, the area that really, the, that is important for us to check is that mouth and the channel that leads out to open water. Um, 
So to Scott's okay. question, is the five and a half feet at the mouth then? Is that it, the point? Yes, it's it's going to trigger? Half, it's five and a half. Well, yes. I'm sorry, Mary. Um, Might want to show the, show the map, uh, Trish, that okay. go for in the yellow Where are we zone, measuring we the five and a half feet? That's my question. Ensure that we have Scott's five and a half feet in that area. So just in the yellow areas, we're right. at five and a half feet, so you won't measure any place else. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in the, in the yellow, that area. And, okay. and talking with the, the uh, yacht club and also talking with some of our staff, the um, sailing staff, that they really don't feel that the remaining portion that's in the red that you see isn't as impacted because we once we clean out in the spring right, they're just really in. it's hard to can fill in the whole basin again um, okay. so that's why we can concentrate the second dredge just in the mouth area that's right. that's where it fills back okay. so and I just want to correct uh, Jeff I think you said we would uh, check it on August 15th and that date was changed to August 31st uh, based on input from the yacht club oh, so okay. sorry about that um, and again, uh, looking at that, the red really you know, outlines what is done in a spring dredge. Um, we will try to um, make sure that we have the manpower to get that done by um, May 1st. We're somewhat unscheduled to make sure make that happen right now. However, the dredger is down for repairs. Um, a second dredge, again, um, is in the, the yellow area. Um, if after September 15th uh, we're not able to get out onto the, the lakefront uh, because of weather conditions, if after that time we haven't started a second dredge, we, we won't do that because it's just the weather um, prevents it from, from happening. Um, if after the second dredge that it, the, um, the area fills back in again, we would not do a, um, a, a third dredge. Um, we, um, excuse me, the staff doesn't feel like the, the um, automatic second dredge um, is, is warranted. Um, we feel that if we monitor the, um, the, the, the water level and the depth of the, the clearance, if at, at the time that the triggers are in place, that would be sufficient so that we don't, um, so we maximize um, staff time in the appropriate areas and make sure that the expenses is justified for the need. Can I, can I just clarify for that? What we did in the past was at 2008, we were only budgeting for one dredge. And then if we had to do a second dredge, it was an added expense that was unexpected and we had to figure out other sh ways to cut our budgets or, or not be prepared. And I think that was a really good item that was brought to us by the Yacht Club is we, we want some assurance that we won't have to worry about getting the authority to do that dredge because that holds up the process and the time. And we want to make sure that you can execute this in a timely fashion and be prepared for it, knowing that your crews are available and your, you know the money is there to do it. So that's why we felt you know we could um, make some changes and go ahead and put it back in our budget. But we won't do it, as Jeff said, unless you know, the, the, it's reasonable that we need to take care of that. Nobody wants to spend money down there needlessly if, you know, we don't have to dredge. So just so you can understand the differences between the policy. Um, any questions? I just had Quid, where, do, where does the sand go that we take? Where do we put that? Um, the sand um, is it's taken up by the dredger, goes through a long hose, mm -hmm. um, and then it travels the, the south um, along the the um, the road down south and discharges right at that, that curve, okay. so it stays within um, stays within Lake Michigan, but just south of us. How long does a dredger last? I read that it was we started it in two thousand and one. <clears throat> right, how long is the useful life of the dredger? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Chuck, do you know the answer to that? Uh, obviously, the maintenance gets a lot higher over the years, uh, but we want to get at least another uh, eight to ten years is what I would expect. You mentioned it's in repairs right now? Yes. How much is that costing us? The repairs are costing approximately $15,000. We have a pump that blew out, so we have to... Um, so we've got a $255,000 piece of equipment that we use about three weeks out of the year? Currently, yes. Have we explored using it in Winnetka, in Waukegan, to renting offset some of the renting it out, basically? Uh, we have not, no. Is that something that we can do? Um, I, sure, I'm, we could always float that out to, um, I'm not sure about Waukegan. I mean, um, Other Winnetka would, be, have to would be appropriate just because of the size of the area. Yeah, you, yeah, Winnetka, you said they are paying fifteen to twenty-five thousand a year. We'll charge right. them ten. Heck, 
Right. And we utilize our equipment a little right. bit more. I mean, it seems like something we ought to look at, don't you think? We could, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as you're dredging, does that um, prohibit boaters to using the harbor as we're dredging? Can they get in and out? While yes. We're yeah, we, we're proposing to actually do the second dredge after Labor Day so as not to interfere with, excuse me, to interfere with um, boat usage. That's okay. that towards the end of um, August is a really high um, uh, use of the, the launch, so we want to do that after the fact. Also, there is some staff. Um, availability because they're extremely busy throughout the parks and this after Labor Day is a more appropriate time to to use them. Jeff that September 15th cutoff seems arbitrary to me and it says in in the proposed policy that it's weather related weather conditions are too unfavorable and return on investment is unfavorable. Um, First of all, I don't think it's a given that weather conditions are unfavorable after September 15th, given the way the weather is now. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, I guess you're proposing to do it the first week of September, whenever Labor Day falls. Right. And then we're saying if it goes to the 15th, the economics don't work. That just doesn't seem consistent with me. And I, it seems like there's another, I don't have an answer, but is there another objective measure we can use to say beyond these water conditions or these temperatures or these something we will not do it anymore but the calendar date with the way, way the weather is today to me seems arbitrary okay does that make sense yes it is um we could have a spectacular october and these guys want to be using their boats up to thanksgiving they ought to be able to do that <laughs> if right. the weather's permitting right guys the, the question is, you we never know how long that fall season will be. And so if you, we had a year here on the chart we gave you where they actually did a dredge, um, you know, they didn't even complete it till in the middle of October. And that seems kind of <coughs> late to get any benefit back on fuel costs and staff time and all that kind of thing. So obviously the ideal, we also did one in 2007 where we finished it the last week of September. But, you know, again, you're you're spending, Forty-five hundred dollars, or up to seven thousand, depending on how much you know you have to, how long you're out there and stuff, um, for a month of boating, six weeks or so. So we're trying to obviously we think we can do the fall dredge in a few days. It's maybe a week max. We've talked about that they can gain as much of September and October as they can, but also winds change as I've been educated a little bit lately on the from the boat yacht club and stuff too and talking with them and the winds are different in september which makes it difficult for us to dredge so the later we go the harder that that challenge does become so we just picked a date trying to maximize a fall season if we were going to spend the money you but know does labor day in september 15th seems awfully close sometimes labor day september 1st but sometimes it's Could the, the eighth or ninth right but we're only looking at a week max time you need to dredge so i guess that's we're trying to segue it into that window i mean i guess i'm are you saying that you'd be willing to spend the money if we have to wait to the last week of september if the weather looks like it's going to be good and so even if it's just a month of sailing you'd spend that money i but guess I think it's forty five hundred dollars right isn't right. that what the estimate was for a fall dredge because it's right. only going to take a week right if it's a week right so I think, you know, Scott, if, if, the if the depth is going to be checked uh, August 31st, then if they need to dredge, they'd be dredging soon. But I'm, I can imagine if Labor Day falls later and then the, for some reason the weather is bad in that week, then all of a sudden you'd be looking at September 15th, 15th and you haven't had a chance to. We, we should, should be able to. And I, I, I guess I agree, Kurt, that if you have this firm, well, it's September 15th, Sorry, we had bad weather from Labor Day until the 14th or whatever, that now it's too late. I, mean, I, I, don't, I just don't know if, since that date is, as you say, somewhat arbitrary. I mean, obviously, if you, you, you don't want to push it back to the end of September, I guess if weather is bad from Labor Day to the end of September, you guys are going to say, oh, well, you know, that loss of the fall is understandable. But, you know, if for, if for some reason Labor Day is late and we have one bad week of weather. And there's a bad week, of, yeah, a bad week of weather. You'd hate to just sort of say, well, sorry, we, we hit this, we, we've triggered this uh, clause and now we can't dredge, even though it may be gorgeous for another six weeks. 
do you have suggested language you'd like us to change it to? I propose just striking paragraph seven. Uh, it kind of leaves it open-ended. I mean, the, the water level's gotta be checked August 31st. Yeah. And if it needs it, then they'll do it as soon as practicable. And if it doesn't, it won't be checked again, and, and then it won't be necessary. It, it just wouldn't happen. Well, you could just say that we're not dredge in October. Well, or, or just say that if, if the water level is, is, if it gets shallow enough that it requires dredging, they will dredge, you know, within, you know, some, as soon as, re as, soon as reasonably possible, weather permitting. Right. Would, would you just leave it as soon as reasonably possible? You don't want, would you guys feel comfortable we put October 1st as the date? Because I would really hate to be committed to having to dredge October oh. 3rd. Be, you know, the group that's here all might understand that people will change over time and different staff mm -hmm. will come in and have to manage this policy. So I think if we could put at least the latest date that we're comfortable doing it, I think that would be helpful. I'm more comfortable with October 1st. Yeah, I am too. Okay, okay. change it to October. Okay. Yeah. And I would just drop that clause about it being... Um, investment un is unfavorable that's confusing to me just blame it on the weather yeah and i really think we should look into ways to increase the utilization of that dredger whether it's Winnetka or <coughs> hate to be redundant but that's a i do think we've looked at it but honestly i can't remember the outcome of it when we talked to him i didn't know if sally remembered that or not but um and Mike Perlman's here too. We, we, we part, part did look into it when we first bought the treasure, and they, they couldn't find anyone to do it that wanted it, but it's, it's probably worth looking to again. Okay. okay. I also think that um, we were a little bit worried about the wear and tear on the dredger. It is not an easy piece of machinery to move down the lake. Um, moving it, it in the water itself takes quite a long time. I know we have tried to move it from Waukegan to Lake Forest. It took much longer than we had expected. And then if you were gonna trailer it, you're gonna then incur that cost of crane as well as tow truck. And so you may be losing a part of whatever your benefit would be. I still think it's worth looking into. Okay. Or a co-op of some kind in the yeah. future where all of us beachfront communities can come together and. We, the cost. we talked about that when we were looking at the golf course right. last fall is there's a lot of specialized equipment that we have to maintain the course and you know, can we share it with other communities can we rent it whatever and the supplies here so sure we can look at it and then i got a really dumb question <laughs> can we dredge deeper in the spring and not have to do it in the fall no we hit um clay okay mm -hmm. yeah and then it you know not then there's a whole procedure that we need to follow okay. for meeting wise. Okay. Are there any other questions from the board members? Would anybody in the audience like to speak? I think Connor had a question. I had a, oh, I had a question about that number, that five and a half foot depth, the five and a half foot depth cutoff. Um, I mean, I have a lot of family members who sail who have boats and between a lead keel and a hull, especially on some of those bigger boats down there at the beach, I could pretty easily imagine that easily five or so feet of that boat are underwater. So, I mean, I was just wondering where that number, that five and a half foot cutoff comes from, who uh, decided on that? We did um, survey all the boats that were within the, the compound and the largest, uh, the, the deepest draw is four and a half feet, or excuse me, four feet, 11 inches. So oh. almost five feet. There you go. Great. Great. Anybody in the audience like to speak? Okay. No, I think just, well, my name's Dave Sam, and I'm uh, the past commodore, or the new commodore of Lake Forest Yacht Club. Our objective was really just to get a crisp, yeah, just, just very, very quickly, and just to, just to really endorse the, the outcome of this. Uh, our objective was really to get a crisp process so that when the first guy hits bottom, which is usually me somehow, uh, <laughs> and, and the alarm goes off, you know, rather than sort of being reactive to it and have to get bureaucratic, processes accomplished, uh, schedule tow trucks, schedule cranes, get all this thing done. And in, in the meantime, the season's ticking away. We've had seasons where we lost 
a good three weeks trying to get all that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not a complaint because I, you know, if it were my business, getting it organized that quickly would be, would be a challenge. So this is a way of getting it all, getting all the levers set up so that we have a very crisp process and when the determination is made that yeah, we need a, we need a dredge, it's, it's just happening as if it were always planned. Mm -hmm. If we get to that magical date and there's plenty of depth, we don't have to do that and then the staff, and the staff can go do other things. Uh, and th that are on Jeff's list. So we, we endorse this as a good solution. Do we run the risk of hitting below or going below five and a half feet prior to Labor Day? Uh, you're gonna lose, last you're gonna year, lose weeks in August where you can't It's say? happened, last year was pretty extreme. We, we uh, I hit, my boat draws four and a half feet and I hit bottom on September 3rd, so. But earlier in August is not an issue. If we it, test by August 31st, we're good? Yeah, we, we really wanted to try to, you know, th this is all a compromise with mm -hmm. the weather. If you set up if you set up the date too early, mm -hmm. then you have the, the, the risk right. of the harbor filling in later. If you set up the date too late, you're bumping into, into Labor Day. Um, and so, so this is really, the, this was really kind of the best probabilistic compromise that we, we thought we could come up with or, or that, that Jeff and Mary came up with with our, um, with our okay. inputs. Could I, could I just mention one thing? He brings up a really good point, though, with water levels, uh, you know, cyclical somewhat. Mm -hmm. We're in this low period, and, you know, we can only dredge to get us a certain depth. And then when we hit the hard and we can't go in and excavate, you know, we just have to realize that there may be a point, or we hope there won't be, but if Michigan levels mm -hmm. were to fall too low, we may not have an option that our dredge couldn't solve that problem mm -hmm. of getting enough clearance for the boats, and, and that, that would be a challenge. But, you know, I, we can't predict that precisely, and we don't, you know, anticipate it, in, you know, right now. But I just think that's an important thing to understand: is that the dredger isn't a magical device to make sure we can always get our boats out. It's it's really going to factor of how much sand, but also the water level in relationship to, you know, what what we have uh, space-wise to, so to there is, clear. So there could be a chance that the water, with how dry our winter was, that the water could be so low that even dredging won't help because we right. can't We might be water. in a situation where only certain size boat would be able to get out, not the bigger boats, but we're hoping that that won't happen. But I think it's, yeah. you know, a factor we should be aware of, you know. Yeah, th I mean, theoretically, I don't know what the 100-year what the hundred year norms are, but uh, in the low, what we've certainly seen within the, you know, 20 year uh, history we've got here with the Lake Forest Harbor is that in extreme low uh, uh, lake level years, it's just that much more critical that we dredge really well and that we stay on top of it because you, you just don't have that, that extra leeway. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been the practical experience. Uh, the 100 year data might suggest there's a point where, where you, could, you could dredge it all the way down to the clay and still be you know, not having that much uh, leeway between the biggest boats and the bottom. But well, we, we just feel, felt like getting a nice crisp process that happens automatically so that the default condition is a dredge happens and, and we, we minimize the impact on the, uh, on the boating season. That's what we're after. Um, and, and that uh, we don't have to rely on, on um, lightning quick reflexes mm -hmm. to deal with a problem, but that we planned ahead for the problem. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thanks. Thank you. And Robin, just if I could comment while they're here, um, it's really been nice to work with the Lake Forest Shot Club besides, you know, obviously working with us and making sure they can enjoy the lakefront. They do an awful lot to give back to the community, um, you know, with different fundraisers and they, you know, make contributions down there as well. And I think they're a real part of why the lakefront is vital um, in that area. I think a lot of people enjoy, even if you aren't a sailor, just coming down and watching what they do and the boats they have and having conversations with them. So. You know, I think they're really um, a great asset for us to continue to work closely with, and it's, it's been really nice to have them as an element at the lakefront, so. Thank you. Okay, um, I, uh, staff uh, recommends uh, the board approve the lakefront boat basin dredging policy as um, corrected uh, to become effective um, for May 1 for the fiscal year 13. Okay. Um, if there's no more questions, can I get a motion to approve the um, Lakefront Boat Basin Dredging Policy as um, amended in point seven um, to become effective on fiscal year 13? So moved. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Great. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks much. for Thank working with us. Thanks, Mary. Nice to see you guys. Okay. All right. Um, Next on the schedule is um, a presentation by um, Superintendent Sally Swarthout on the 2012 Festival of Fireworks. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. Well, I get to invite you to a party. <laughs> the foundation would like you to join them in a celebration of Independence Day with the community as well as with Grammy winner Kenny Loggins. What I'm going to do is give you an update as to where we are in our planning. We are again going to offer food, a beer garden, live music, and activities with the kids, um, culminating with a gala fireworks display. Should be big and good and loud. Uh, this year, we are going to open the gates an hour early. We're going to actually open at 5 p.m. at Deer Path Community Park, where we will host this event. The music is going to begin at 6 with the band 16 Candles. They will then be followed by Blue Sky Rider, culminating with Kenny Loggins, and then the fireworks. Food, again, is going to be catered by Levels, and if anyone would care to see the menu, it's actually on the Friends website, which is friendslfpr.org. Uh, you can click on the Levels link, and it will take you straight to the menu of what's going to be offered that evening. We have also brought in Donati's Pizza, to provide slices for anyone who would so choose to go that direction. Tickets this year, uh, we have a little bit of a change with our ticketing process. This year, Lake Forest and Lake Bluff residents will be charged $10, and all other non-residents will be charged $15. These tickets can be purchased in advance online, again, at the website or at the Recreation Center. If you do choose to pay at the gate, it will be a cash-only um, exchange. We're offering several VIP packages this year. A VIP package for adults is $75. It includes admission, food, and beverage. We are offering a child VIP package because we feel parents should be able to take their children with them for $25, and that too will include admission, food, and beverage. And new this year is a family VIP package. It's two adult, four children, food, beverage, a general parking ticket, and it has a value of $270, and we're selling it for $200. Um, we are also offering a wonderful meet and greet opportunity with Kenny Loggins this year. It will be a conversation as well as a photo opportunity. It is, has a price of $350. It, too, is located on the Friends website. Um, I would suggest that those interested in the VIP packages or the meet and greet, please go on and purchase early. We have a limited amount of these packages, and they can only be purchased online and in advance. So there will be none of those offers at the gate that day. Um, again, the website is friendslfpr.org. And on that website, you will find links <coughs> to all of these things. That's what I got to tell you. Wonderful. Sounds awesome. Good. Anybody have any questions? I actually have a question. Sure. I was just wondering, um, with the VIP, the family packages, or the package, do you offer that with, I don't see it with a premier parking pass? No, it comes with a general parking pass. So a premier parking pass so would be someone, extra. You'd it, have to buy that separately then? Yes. So you would get the general parking, which is a $20 value. If you wanted to upgrade to Premier, you would have to pay that $50 for the Premier. You just pay 30 more? Mm, it's just, it, it, this is the way that it's packaged. <laughs> no, that's okay. The Premier parking, because it's so much better than the, the general parking. Right. No, it, that is not part of the package at this point. It is a suggestion I can make to the foundation, and they can make a decision on that, an upgrade, so to speak. I think that would be great. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. All right, Thank thanks. You. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Sally. Okay, um, next, um, after a little break, we'll welcome Superintendent Jeff White back for the um, spotlight on summer camps. Yes, um, Rob Carmichael, the curator of the Wildlife Discovery Center, was uh, supposed to give this presentation. However, he came down with uh, laryngitis um, yesterday, and um, so I'm filling in for him. I hope I can do him justice. Um, this is a presentation on our, our summer camp um, offerings for um, this year. 
Uh, currently, we have um, 37 different camps. We did trim that down uh, considerably. Uh, well, we did trim it down from last year. Um, the, the staff spent um, the majority of the winter trying to determine the best way to improve our, our camp offerings and um, how we can be a little bit more responsive to um, the needs of um, the families that utilize our program. Um, and new for this year is a, uh, a two-week option uh, in addition to um, the full camp session. Camp is six, six weeks, so yeah, we did break this down uh, for in two-week options. Um, we've gotten quite a bit of feedback from parents thinking that it's a wonderful idea. Uh, it does give them an opportunity to, rather than just go and, and pick one and stay with one for the entire summer, they are able to now select two, three different program or camps to go into to, to give them a different uh, variety throughout the summer. And of course, we provide a, a very um, safe camp experience for um, our campers. We do provide our um, staff with um, staff training on how to keep the kids safe and how to engage them and make sure that they are getting a, a very uh, uh, useful experience. Um, we feel that um, there is a lot of uh, value and uh, convenience to our program, seeing how it is, um, it, it is within uh, Lake Forest. Um, we do um, have some competition um, out in the marketplace. We do have private camps. There's Banner, uh, Panther Camp, just to name um, two. So uh, for us to provide this two-week option really does um, help us be a little bit more competitive. Um, there are several advantages to um, being in a, in a camp experience. Uh, you do make friends uh, that last a lifetime. There are memorable experiences. We do get kids outside to experience uh, nature or just being outside in general. They're not inside um, in front of the TV. Uh, we do offer, they do get some skill development and exposure to new activities and um, we really do have something for everybody's interests. Um, we offer um, early childhood and variety camps. That's uh, hooray for summer, awesome August, because why? Wildlife and nature adventure camps. Uh, we have uh, McCormick Day Camp, uh, the wildlife camp, wildlife um, science. Uh, there's summer variety. We have um, theater camp, uh, chess, uh, twigs, uh, dance camps. There's uh, sports instructional camps. Um, we do offer um, uh, basketball through uh, Bill Willington, uh, former Chicago Bulls um, player. Uh, there's a Bears and Fire soccer camp. We also offer a, a junior uh, golf camp at um, Deer Path. There's basketball, volleyball camps. We do have the sailing programs or sailing camps. Uh, we do. Um, and use a lot of counselors and training CITs. Um, we average about 70 each summer, uh, and we have for the last seven years. Uh, their age is uh, anywhere from 13 to uh, 15 years old. Um, this is on-the-job training uh, for them. Uh, many of them move on to become um, regular paid staff counselors. And they do assist us with the supervision of the campers, assist the campers with activities, um, they do some setup and cleaning, um, and, but more importantly, they, they have fun. I think just being, a, um, being able to be outside, be with the, the kids and uh, with their friends. Uh, counselors, we average over 100 each summer. These are paid staff. They're mostly high school and college students. Uh, we are uh, considered the number one employer for um, uh, this, these age groups. Um, participation over the last three years, you can see that we've, we've seen a, um, a steady decline in, in um, participation. Uh, we are on track right now uh, for where we were this time last year, uh, but we think that because of the changes that we made to the, the programs and the offerings that we're going to see uh, increased participation this year. It's a little early right now, um, but we will be doing some marketing to make sure that we get the word out that there are spots available uh, and that camp um, with the department is, is a, a great opportunity. Um, we started registration on March 13th. Um, they can, you can go to lfrep.com 
or to call the, um, the department um, at the rec center to get information. Um, and it's really just an opportunity for kids to explore, experience, and discover uh, summer lake forest. Um, yeah, it's a great opportunity. So, any questions? Have um, you heard any comments from parents about camps that um, are no longer being um, offered this year? Or families saying, we really like that camp and now it's gone. Have they gone to other camps instead? Have you tracked any of that? I have not heard anything okay. um, yet. Um, we did, a lot of the camps that um, we got rid of, or, or you know, that we well, aren't offering this year or fall into a couple categories. They just were low performing. Uh, camps or they competed with other camps of similar mm -hmm. uh, nature within the department or we folded them into a, a, a liked camp just so that we can uh, get a little bit more economy of scale when mm -hmm. it comes to staff and equipment and, and, and that kind of stuff. Okay. Great. Just, I had a quick question on that counselor and training. Yes. So is that for, are you actually providing training for the counselors? Yes, Joe Mobile, um, the uh, program manager that oversees um, that, that program, does have an extensive training for them. I, I believe they're gonna be doing um, just uh, camper management, CPR first aid uh, training, uh, just to name some stuff. So they do provide an, an extensive program for them. And then where are you finding the counselors from? Like this whole area or just Lake Forest? Most of them are, you know, residents of Lake Forest. Uh, we have, we send out in the beginning of March an invitation to past employees to, to come back. I mean, that's the counselors, but the CITs, it, it's, it's more word of mouth. Everybody knows that it's a great opportunity. So we never have a need for, you know, to, to do an increased marketing on that, that aspect because everybody just, enjoys that program for that um, activity. And do you have, I'm just curious about your counselors, do you have turnover with these counselors? Turnover in counselors? For, I'm just Very wondering. Cause yeah, we see a lot of them just as they, as, they, um, as they graduate from high school, go into college, we tend to lose them probably after sophomore year when they start going into internships or doing something more towards what their, their career aspirations are. But there's always someone to, to fill in the, the need and I think we have a wait list of people that are interested in becoming counselors. Oh, that's good. So. Okay, great, thanks. Great. Any other questions for Jeff? Thanks, Jeff. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Jeff. Um, okay, um, director's report, Mary. Um, just have a couple things tonight. The first was I just wanted to comment on our Easter egg hunt, which was uh, this past Saturday. We got to be outside. It was a fabulous thing. Um, beautiful weather, huge crowd. Uh, the largest that I've seen in the five years that I've been here. So we were really excited about it. Uh, Joe Mobile organized the event and I think it was you know, really well received. Uh, they upgraded a lot of our games and our activities that the kids have uh, done over the years. And um, we had magician show and we had balloon artists and you know the the egg hunt out in the out in the park so it was just fantastic so um, thank everybody who came out and participated in that uh, we had some new uh, newspaper coverage at the time too um, and also we took hopefully some great photos to use for our own uh, brochures coming up the um, the next item I just wanted to uh, mention to the park board and if I could get a little sense of if you were if you were comfortable with it or not we had postponed after the last meeting choosing the um, surface material for the town line park mm -hmm. playground until we got a better sense of how the uh, fields were performing after we did our drill and fill and and swale improvement out there uh, we have been monitoring that i think i sent you all an email uh, indicating that we had gone out after recent rains and walked it and our equipment has been able to get on the field and we're seeing definitely improvements from that we'd like to be able to continue to monitor that through the rest of this month and look at potentially at the may 8th meeting bringing the surface material back through you because it also then has to go to city council and we'd really like to be able to give our vendor direction in june so that we can be on their schedule when we get the install you know start to do the install that they'll follow in right behind us um, if that's possible uh, the only other reason I bring it up too is that I've had a couple board members say they tentatively may not be around in June for the June board meeting 
I myself I know will be out of town so um, we're just kind of wondering if in the event that we should have not a quorum you know board members in the June that may timing might be better but I, I you know if you want us to wait till June we can certainly do that we just we might have a little delay in um, you know putting the surface down with timing with the playground if we wait that late in June so is any concerns with doing it in May or do you if we get some rain yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we get a lot of rain, then yeah, absolutely. But okay, because I, I know we I'm have sure rain this can... week, and we had you know some of the last uh, couple of weeks, just days here and there of it. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, but it is it is very nice, at least to look across the field and see it green, because mm -hmm. it always had kind of a yellow yeah. hue yeah. Um, to it before. So that alone, you know, tells us that it's it's healthier than it's been. Um, but uh, you know, we we would have still another three almost four weeks to monitor it before we could bring the you know the surface material proposal to you but um, if we could we'd like to at least try to shoot for that if that's possible so okay I'm getting nod so we'll, we'll plan that yeah. then okay um, and then the next item I wanted to mention was um, Smeltorama is at the end of uh, Mar or April April 28th it's our annual fun event at the lakefront and uh, come on down we'll have music and dip your nets and, and uh, experience a very unique tradition uh, living on the lakefront. So it's a great evening. Full information's in our, um, the spring summer brochure as well as you can look at it uh, you know, on our website. And then um, we have scheduled a special work day uh, at Forest Park. This has come out of some requests from um, a few of the residents who have been associated with the Forest Park master plan discussions and things have been happening. And uh, we've uh, been talking with them to put this volunteer work day together. It'd be from nine to noon on the 28th. And basically it's a uh, opportunity to use community residents and volunteers interested in helping us um, do some cleanup of buckthorn, garlic mustard, some of our other invasives, um, you know, in around Forest Park. And uh, it'd be a nice way to, I think, pull people together to do an environmental, you know, improvement. And Lake Forest Open Lands is also working with us. They do this type of work frequently, and uh, they're going to help advertise it through their organization and, and help us kind of get the list and activities all organized uh, with our with Chuck Myers and our, our team. So just wanted to let you know about that. I'll send that out to you all as, so you'll have a, more, a little more information on that. But um, And then uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is um, on uh, April 29th, we have our Lake Forest Dance Academy preschool recital. Um, so this is for our youngest dancers who will be performing for their families. And, and uh, it's always uh, really a fun and special event to see that and involves quite a large number of children so uh, very busy next couple weeks in the department with a variety of special events and activities coming up um, and that of course will lead us right into uh, May and, and some of our other activities uh, and then the last thing is we are taking registration now for foursomes for golf for the Fred Jackson uh, Golf Classic, which we do as a, a fundraiser with our foundation. And that will be June 3rd, um, which is a Friday at uh, Deer Path Golf Course. So again, uh, information is available for that. Is it June? You, is that correct? The first. Is it June 1st? Do I have the date wrong? Graduation is June 2nd. Okay, yeah. June 1st. Okay, June 1st. Then. So I'm sorry. Thanks, Robin. Okay. Um, so June 1st is this year's date. So that's coming up, too. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we do a very unique uh, golf outing. You do not have to be a great golfer to have fun, but great golfers are also welcome because they help make all of us uh, know where we need to work on. So um, it's, it's a good time out there, and I uh, encourage everybody to come support that. All the proceeds from the golf outing do go back to our department to assist with capital needs. So um, you know, very, very, very helpful event. So, um, and that it, that's it for my report tonight. Great. Thanks, Mary. Um, any comments or questions by the board members? Got a couple questions. Can you give us an update on where we landed and for memberships at Deer Path? Sure. Golf course? Um, I appreciate the heads up. I did put some information out for you on um, the board members' tables here tonight. And uh, just to give you a little bit of backdrop, this uh, information that I provided to you today is through March 31st. Um, so we still have the month of April memberships to add on top of this. Compared to last year, um, as of March 31st, we had uh, 311 memberships sold in last year for the tune of $346,570. 
for this year through 2012, we've sold 303 memberships. So we're down a total of eight memberships um, <coughs> for the dollar Excuse amount me. of $343,073. So just about $3,500 um, difference in our, our income streams. As you can see, the, the numbers vary a little bit across the board. It's not one big category that's a huge problem, but I guess the one that we're, uh, we'll be monitoring the most closely is our junior membership. Um, as well as we want to continue to, um, uh, you know, push some of the, uh, the senior memberships and, you know, across the board trying to get uh, additional membership play. We did change the incentive this year. So, you know, March 31st was the deadline to get some free um, golf carts, uh, uh, bucket of balls, that kind of thing uh, during the month of April. So that's why we, we were really pleased because in early March it was pretty low, but then we got that surge. And I think those incentive value package we offered was, intra, you know, uh, of interest to those who do like to play the full season. But we last year we sold 125 memberships um, between March 15th and May 15th. So if we can pick up some of those, I think we'll be on track, you know, where we want to be with the membership sales. So um, we'll, we'll keep looking at that. The other thing I can say is that um, I'm really actually pretty pleased with our junior membership total given the fact that with Richard Franklin's Golf Academy that he's now running, his camps for the summer are almost full uh, to capacity. He's even added extra sections. And we think a lot of the kids are taking advantage of doing that in addition to having memberships. So I think the overall revenue streams will be you know, much improved, but it's not all just in memberships. It's in other areas as well. So, um, And then the second sheet that uh, we provided to you, Jeff, uh, kind of worked on that was, um, oops, I got the wrong sheet. Hang on. Um, this was a little bit more detail as far as daily fees, um, uh, seasonal fees, all of our revenues are listed here, not just memberships. So again, I just wanted you to get a sense of where that was as of the end of March. And um, you know, we are down in overall revenue compared to our budget for the fiscal year. Again, we were, as you recall, impacted by some major storms last summer in June and July. Um, which impacted our daily fees as well as we were down in from memberships to budget. So um, we do anticipate knowing what our daily fees coming in and tracking through the month. April's been great. Thank goodness we've had some good weather because that's really been helping with our daily fees. We do anticipate needing to get a loan from the recreation fund in the amount of almost $75,000 compared to $22,000 last year. And so we, you know, we still have um, to meet that budget uh, ratio that we have for our debt. And, but recognizing that we've also scaled back some of our expenses, you know, to, to kind of keep as much um, loss in, you know, in containment as, as we can. So, but we are looking at, uh, as I mentioned, about a $75,000 loan from the rec department to, uh, to the golf course. So. So Mary, a question on the revenue sheet. I'm looking at the, very, the bottom mm -hmm. line on total rounds, and it says year to date we've had 1430, which is awesome, compared to 344 last year, year to date. See that? Yes. Yet our total revenue is less than last year, year to date. How can that be? I want to make sure. So. So walk me through that again. You're saying so. For just daily looking fees? at total rounds, we had 14.30 this year. The very bottom line there, total I rounds. See that 14. Just to the right of the dark solid line. Actually, all those numbers are the same on both yeah. sides for current and actual. Yeah, everything down at the bottom. Those that bottom box. You know, I, I'm going to have to check the formulas to make sure that that's. Yeah, let me, I'm going to have to check the formulas to make sure that, okay. that that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, bottom line though, our, we're slightly behind last year. That's what you're saying from both a from a revenue and a rounds perspective. Correct. Okay. Now, April will change that because we've had a lot. You know, we're getting rounds in April which we did not have last year because it was just a really cold and miserable April. So. We'll see how that plays out with the final round count. Remind us when the course actually opened. 
We actually opened this year uh, the first week of March. So we were able to capture the Yes, so we got March, March and uh, March and April, which we didn't have much of any rounds last year for that, those months. So that's helping us from a uh, revenue. Now we have to recognize though that most of those rounds in March and April have been members rounds. So, you know, it's not all daily fees coming in. It's a lot of members who are coming back out to the course early. And that was one of the reasons why some of the courses around us opened a week earlier than we did, but we knew it would be mostly members. Um, it was impacting our ability to actually stage the course for the rest of the season and could have some negative impacts. You know, if we had people out there before, we had a chance to do some of the necessary work on the tarp removals and, you know, those kinds of things. So we, we felt that that was one week was worth the holding back because we knew that it wasn't going to be revenue from that. It was just a service mechanism at that point but we've been uh, very busy <laughs> at the course um, which is very good so the lessons have been going very well for spring so my son and I played over spring break and I have to say it was the course was beautiful it looked great we had a great time we only played nine holes and we're not members so we actually <laughs> played but it was beautiful and I have to say every time we drive past the course I say to whoever's in the car with me look at how beautiful the course looks I mean it is green it is beautiful and it, it's it's wonderful. I mean, and I know this weather has been great, but it's everybody should go and play. Yeah, I played on Just Saturday and it was packed. Yeah, was uh, the driving game. range was packed, and Richard had his yep. thing up on the putting green, and he was busy, yep. and it just had a real good vibe to it. And so. the clubhouse looks wonderful. I mean, everything. Yeah. We will. Um, summer. We will be up. doing a, um, a report to the city council at their committee of the whole on March or on May seventh at the six thirty to seven thirty time block. Uh, it's a chance for city council to also get an update of, of memberships and where things have been headed because uh, at that point we'll also have the April uh, numbers off the system. We won't have financial numbers per se, but we, you know, from a budget, but we'll have it all from our system. We can pull that off. Um, and then we're also going to have Kemper kind of talk about the relationship that we've been building and some of the great things that have already occurred with their participation. And then uh, we'll have. Uh, uh, the Golf Advisory Committee and themselves will be doing a report of what they've been up to and what they've been able to contribute in this process, which has really been a great, it's been a lot of great collaboration between, you know, Kemper residents and our staff. So um, we're going to have that hour uh, opportunity with City Council in May. So, wonderful. So I have one more question, if I'm mm -hmm. allowed. You mentioned Before. last meeting um, the creation of an emerald ash borer management plan. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an update on where that stands or Chuck? Sure. Maybe? Chuck, do you want to mention what you've got going with that? Chuck's here, so I'll let him comment on that. Yeah, we are working on it right now. We've, uh, we're putting together plans for a tree inventory uh, starting this summer. Uh, we are going to be doing a uh, presentation next week for City Council on EAB. We're going to talk more about uh, some of the details of the plan. And then next month, I believe uh, uh, Mary scheduled for the Park Board meeting to uh, also have me talk about EAB. So more to come. We are working on the plan, though. So uh, you know, not a lot of good news about uh, what we're seeing out there, it is uh, emerging and we're getting more phone calls uh, with residents that do have EAB. And I think, uh, don't be alarmed that ashes haven't leafed out yet, that they usually leaf out later. Uh, but uh, I would anticipate kind of an early uh, shock to some residents. And the plan will include resources and, and guidance for homeowners not just the trees on city property yes. correct yes and a, one of the major components is education uh, for the public so yeah it will include that great mm -hmm. thanks sure thanks Jeff anybody else um, I just wanted to um, announce that on May 3rd at Gorton Community Center at 630 we will be having a joint public meeting with the um, Historic Preservation Commission and the Park Board um, regarding the Forest Park Master Plan. Um, this will be the final opportunity for the public to comment on the plan. And then that is, again is May 3rd, and at May 8th we will also have a presentation at our meeting. Okay. I hope you'll all be there. What time does that meeting start? 6.30 at Gordon. Not here, Gordon. 
Do you know where? Is it going to be downstairs or Is it going to be in the big room? room? It's in the main, the community room. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, no other comments? Um, opportunities for the public? Yeah. No, public. <laughs> so um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Meeting adjourned. <coughs> Thank you.